In this video, HomePods, are they worth it? Desk docking, MacBooks, Apple Silicon software support, AirPods for audio files, Apple Smart Home, hard disk travel, iOS 16 battery level is back, and an update on me. Want the latest Apple news leaks and rumors? Subscribe and ring the bell. Before we go too much further, live streaming tonight, don't forget about it. Uh, you can do the thing up wherever it is. And uh, yeah, you won't miss it. Uh, join me. And in this video, as usual, we are answering your Apple questions because there's bugger all news to talk about. So let's start off with this one. Randomness R asks, IK answers, are HomePod minis worth it or is it better to wait for the new full-sized HomePod? And this is a really easy one to answer because we don't know if there's a bigger HomePod coming. At least we don't know if it's going to be anytime soon. You know, we've been hearing rumors about different things. Some stuff takes a lot longer than we expect. We might hear that it's coming in November and it actually comes out in the spring. It might be another year yet. There might be manufacturing issues. So right now I wouldn't plan on this new bigger HomePod because A, we don't know what it's going to be. We don't know what the new features are going to be. So I would say right now, if you need some audio stuff and you're not super tight on budget, grab the HomePod minis that you need right now. And then if something better comes along down the line, either resell the HomePod minis because they don't really drop a huge amount of value, or you can always redeploy them to other rooms in your home, or it might be that those new bigger HomePods, if and when they come, might allow you to integrate them into a home theatre system, and then you're going to be the happiest fella on the planet anyway, because you're going to have a pretty awesome home theatre system. Uncle Bar asks, IK Vances, do you plan on getting the bridge docking station for your M2 Air so you can use it like a desktop when you use it at home? If so, will you do a review of it? Hope your family as well. My family is very well, and onto the actual question, the bridge dock for the MacBook Air. Now, I was having a look at this, it was uh, on Apple Insider. Um, they've got all the links if you want to go and buy one, but just head over there and, and check it out. But um, I'm not a massive fan of these because, especially with the MacBook Airs, you only get one external display, and that is uh, even if you close the thing up. So by closing it up and using it in one of these bridge docks, I would basically be dropping a display. Then I also need to connect an extra keyboard and mouse. And I actually think that the keyboard and the trackpad that you get on a MacBook Air, especially the MacBook Air M2, is very, very nice to use. It's very pleasant. It's very usable. So what I would recommend for people that want to use this as a desk computer and take it with them is to use the desk uh, display as a second display. So use your internal keyboard, your internal trackpad, unless you particularly want to use a um, mechanical keyboard or something along those lines. If you've got a setup that you really want to use, go for it. But I really like using dual displays, having the second display as you know the 4K that I've got on the desk right here. Um, and then using the MacBook Air itself with its internal display as extra screen real estate. Even if you're only gonna keep emails or Twitter or something on the main display, and then uh, use your external one as your kind of primary display while you are at the desk. Uh, that's what I would say. Also, those things are like $400. That seems like a lot to um, stand up your Mac. Bridge, if you're out there and you want me to take a look at it, if you think it's uh, a more compelling use case than that, do get in touch. I'm more than happy to have a look at it and. and explain to me why it's a much better solution. Random Nassar asks, IK answers how many years of software support will the M1 Max MacBook Pro get? Now this is difficult to know because we're in the first generation of Apple Silicon. Uh, we're just moving into the M2 generation now, so our second generation. Uh, so we have no kind of track record on how long Apple Silicon will last. Although what we can do is look at the iPhones because they are based on the same chips. Uh, it's quite likely that the uh, length of software support is going to be very similar. If we look at iOS 16, for example, the phones that are compatible with iOS 16 are back as far as the 2017 iPhone 8 and iPhone 10. So that's that's basically as far back as the new software support goes. The iPhone 7, the iPhone 6. S generations all lose software support this year. So that's five years. I think we're probably going to be looking towards seven, which tends to be what Apple does in general um, with these software updates. But I think between five and seven of full software support. And then you're also still going to get security updates on um, Mac OS versions after that as well. So I wouldn't worry too much. I think you're going to get a really good um, amount of software support natively. And then you start to get into your patches and people like DOS Dude and stuff like that, where you can actually still run newer versions, probably, although that was all x86 based and it was almost like hackintoshing your own Mac. 
We'll see what happens with that, but I don't think you're going to be disappointed. Five years, absolute minimum. Random Nassar asks, IK answers, when will Apple make AirPods for audio files? Now, we're already hearing that this year we are most likely going to be getting in the AirPods Pro uh, better codecs that are able to bring lossless audio to those uh, headphones. But audio files in general very rarely will use Bluetooth headset. The main reason for this is the amount of data bandwidth. So being able to get enough information over to them is quite tricky. So bear that in mind. Um, they also tend to be very much looking for a flat, unbiased sound, I would say. So you want to hear exactly what the original track was, whereas Apple tends to um, tune these headphones to be more in line with what the vast majority of people would want, because that's who buys these things. It is the majority that their um, products are designed for. What I could see happening is for the AirPods Max to finally get wired audio that works a lot more like a regular set of headphones and Apple giving you a profile on them that gives you a completely flat um, frequency response which doesn't kind of interfere with the music as it's mastered. But I think for the AirPods Pro and the AirPods in general, we're probably gonna be seeing uh, Apple stick with the mainstream on these as opposed to heading towards audio files. They've got a very specific set of needs and it is a very small market to address. Random Nassar asks, I gave answers, when will Apple release more smart home accessories? I'm surprised they haven't done this already to be completely honest because even for me, somebody that's quite tech involved, I find smart home stuff quite intimidating. There's a lot of issues where stuff isn't compatible, where there's bridges that you need in order to make things work, to talk to each other properly. I don't feel confident myself in going out there and buying uh, a home accessory and then getting it home and expecting that it will actually work as expected. So um, I really would like Apple to do this, um, whether they do certified for home kit, which I think they've done some stuff with already, but then it still doesn't tell you whether you need other accessories. It's it's an absolute mess out there in smart home stuff. Uh, I'm trying to listen to a few more podcasts about it to try and get my head around what's going on. But even when you do that, a lot of these um, podcasts at a much higher level, because if you're doing a specific podcast about home kit stuff, or about smart homes, you're gonna assume that your audience already is into it because they're listening to it, so it makes life very difficult. Marcin Kowalczyk asks, IK answers on the topic of travel, non-SSD, also known as old style spinner drives with precious data inside, of course, plus airport x-ray, is it dangerous for the data or not to get x-rayed? I've heard some say that it's fine and some say it spells doom for the precious bits in the spindle drive when it gets x-rayed at the airport even once. What's your take on this? So it's a really interesting um, topic here. I, I mean, I, I think it's something that's becoming less and less important because obviously spindle drives are falling out of favor quite uh, dramatically, even in sort of older laptops, most people that are still using an older laptop like that, if they want to use it in a, a useful way, will probably replace it with an SSD. But uh, the X-rays, as far as I can tell from research online, uh, the X-rays do no damage to spindle hard drives. There is a chance with any radiation that you could flip individual bits, but the chances are that there's gonna be very, very little damage um, and uh, it shouldn't cause issues unless you are regularly, regularly, regularly X-raying these things. Uh, that's why space hardware is hardened, i.e. they put in multiple redundancies so that they can uh, verify stuff. What is more damaging though is if you go through a metal detector with these, so it is better to put it through the x-ray than it is to put it through the metal detector because a lot of the metal detector stuff is magnetic and that will just annihilate your drives. Um, so too long didn't read for this is always back up whatever you're going to travel with because there is always the chance as well of stuff getting lost, stuff getting damaged, stuff getting stolen when you're traveling. So make sure you've always got a backup of any critical data. You don't just take it through on a single spinning hard drive or a single SSD because that is just asking for trouble anyway but the X-ray is the safest way of going through, so put your laptops through the X-ray rather than taking it through the metal detector. Team Kinetics asks, I gave answers, do you like the implementation of battery percentage on iOS 16 beta? It's not something I've been eagerly anticipating, but I know some people feel very strongly about battery percentage on iPhones. And yes, I actually really like the way that they've done it. It's basically a solid bar now with the number in the middle. They don't bother putting the percentage sign on there because if you're looking at that number, you know that that's what it is. Um, I don't think it's uh, required. I would actually quite like the iPad to adopt the same look for, for the battery percentage, because I think at the moment you still get the uh, 
the portion bar and then you get the number next to it with the percentage because they're not short on space. I think unify it, make it all the same. That, that would look much better to me. And I do understand why people like it. It's actually been quite interesting to me to see when the battery starts visually draining um, on my iPhone. I use it all the time. Um, yeah. I really like it and I think it's a, a good thing. I've also been watching a video today on EVs because I might be getting an EV soon, more on that later. And the fact that we might be moving over to sodium based batteries instead of lithium, which would be all kinds of better in terms of the environment. Not sure about the charge density yet, but uh, certainly for the bigger batteries, that could be interesting. But yeah. Uh, I, I think the battery percentage coming back is a, a, a positive step. Also, on this, I've seen some people confused about why certain phones get it and certain phones don't. So the iPhone minis don't get it and the iPhone 11 and the iPhone 10R don't get it. But the iPhone 10 X and 10S do. So it's not about the age of the device, it's about the amount of pixels that are there. So my thought is that when Apple has tested this, they've basically looked at the uh, percentage when they've done it on the minis and it doesn't look right because they are physically making that smaller on the screen. Um, so you've got less pixels to play with on the inside. Same with the 10R, it's got an LCD display and same with the 11. It's got an LCD screen, which were both lower resolution than the OLEDs that we get in most cases um, from the 10, the 10S, the 10S Max, uh, the 12 and the 13 models. That's my thought. That's my theory on what can get it and what can't and why. Thank you so much. Brandon L asks, IK Advances, I see you releasing specific questions as a shorter video format. Have you thought about doing some of those as TikToks or YouTube Shorts? And yes, uh, that is what we've done over the past uh, couple of days because basically we had a load of questions. Some of them were really good and it's very difficult to actually optimize what you're putting into uh, YouTube when you do multiple topics on a single video. So when I do a long video of all IK answers, I can only sort of mention a couple of those things in the title, in the thumbnail. And that means that people aren't discovering the channel if they're trying to find other information. If you're coming back every day, which if you are, thank you so much, I really appreciate you. But if you're discovering the channel for the first time, it's gonna be because there's a specific topic you want to see. So those more specific topics that didn't make it into the thumbnail and the title, I can then break out into other videos. Uh, I apologize if it means that you're seeing the same thing twice, sorry about that. Uh, but yeah, I would love to put some stuff out on TikTok and on uh, Instagram Reels and YouTube Shorts. You have to make them really compelling in that short format and grab people's attention, otherwise it makes no difference anyway. Uh, and that's kind of a lot of extra editing. We're going to see what we can do with it, but um, no promises at the minute. What we might do on there, though, is breaking news so we can do a quick one minute video of a breaking news story during the day and then we talk about it in more detail the next day. Let me know what you think about that. And if you're not following me on the TikTok and the Instagram and stuff like that, now would be a really good time to. And on to uh, things changing a little bit on the channel. Um, a little bit of an update from me. You might be aware that I left my previous job and I was looking for a new job. I have accepted a new job, uh, which will be starting on the 23rd of August. I'm gonna do a live stream tonight, I think, so we can chat more about it then if you like. I'm not gonna go into too much detail about the job here, uh, but yeah, we'll be starting a new job. That's why I was also looking at EVs, because fingers crossed I can get an EV instead of a regular car with it. Sorry about yesterday, we're doing a lot of changes in the house. We're moving bedrooms between different people and swapping rooms and, then my sink decided to fall to bits, so I had to go to Ikea last night, and it was a whole mess. Project 91 is gonna happen very, very soon once we've got some of these projects in the house out of the way. So if you've not subscribed already, now is a really good time to do it. Thanks to all the Patreons over here for supporting the channel. If you wanna be one of those and uh, and choose what perks you would like, let me know and, uh, and, and just go and do that. ikdave.com forward slash Patreon. Thank you so much. See you in the next one. Want the latest Apple news leaks and rumors? Subscribe and ring the bell. Also, it's really hot here. I'm sweating balls.